And dear Jim Porter has uh, contributed lots of money to Senator Toomey over the years as well. So if he owes them this job. Yeah. yeah. This is what we're going to have to fight. We're hearing rumors. Um, David J. Porter is from Hershey, Pennsylvania. I went to Hershey Indivisible and did one of these. And somebody said, I went to fifth grade with him. Yeah. Yes, he did. And he was an ass man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he is, from, he is from Hershey, Pennsylvania, and he does not belong on our Thursday report of appeals. He'll be dangerous for women. He'll be dangerous for our civil rights. He'll be dangerous for, for everybody. He was. He actually launched, he and Sonia Torm, they launched an opposition website against Sonia Sotomayor so that she would not get uh, confirmed with the Supreme Court. They created a website. So what did we do? We created a website with him. It's uh, www.davidjporter, or actually davidporterfiles.com. And it's one of these papers that I passed around to you to do. You can learn, you can learn all things about him. Everything that we pulled um, from his writings. So this is davidporterfiles.com to learn all about this gentleman and why we don't want to really go to circuit. Now, I do want you to you know, feel inspired. I want, I want you to walk away feeling really inspired a little bit. So before I show you this, I do want to give you an idea of the obstruction that happened in Obama's last two years. So in Obama's last two years, he was only able to confirm, anyone want to take a guess how many judges in his last two years? One. Two. A little, a little more generous. Twenty. Mm -hmm. I'll give you a context. Reagan was able to confirm 86 judges in his last two years. Um, George uh, W. Bush was able to confirm 60 in his last two years. And Clinton was able to confirm 70 in his last two years. So that's a difference, an average of 70 down to 20. Well, what happened to the actual court's day-to-day -day operations while? Yes, people don't get the justice that they need because there are not judges sitting on these benches. That's what happened, and now they're in a fury to fill these judgeships because there's so many vacancies and people can't get their day in court. And now they're blaming the Democrats for obstructing, right? So this is another video. You're gonna to have to. I wish I had sound.
who held their noses and they voted for Donald Trump because they knew the importance of the federal courts. And they wanted his judges on the Supreme Court and not Hillary Clinton's judges on the Supreme Court. They knew the importance of this. The left didn't really pay too much attention and that's why they the consequences. So now you're all deputized why courts matter. So I can't always come back to Berks County, although I love you, thank you James. Um, I need you now to take this torch. And so I do collect names and emails. I send you out, uh, if I freeze, I'll send you out calls to action like the ones you have. And now it's up to you to make these phone calls. And I'll tell you, the phone calls that come out of this room are important. Too many cares more about the phone calls that come out of Berks County than he cares about the phone calls that come out of Pittsburgh proper or Philadelphia. He knows those aren't his voters. He might think you're his voters. He might care what you have to say. And so I'll tell you this as well, is that people that will call to his office talking about federal courts. They call his office talking about immigration, or the tax scam. They call his office about the ACA. They don't call about the federal courts. If a third of you in this room call his office tomorrow and talk about the federal courts, alarm bells go off in his office like, holy, like what just happened? I'm in a church right now. Like, what just happened? It's okay, where are you, you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you say you call the office, what do you say when you call the office? So, I, there is a script. I don't know if you, if you didn't get a copy. There is a script that we provide. But you're going to call, call the office and just and speak from your heart, basically. You're going to call and say, no extremists on our federal benches. Oh. You know? Oh. Are calls more effective than emails? I think calls are more effective. They're all effective to get to track of all. But the phone calls matter. Personal letters matter. If any of you have experience of the federal courts and you can put this into your own words and have a personal experience, that really matters. But if not, phone calls are good. So are you ready to defend the courts? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're going to contact Senator Toomey. You're going to tell him no treatment judges. I just got a letter back from Toomey yesterday. He mm -hmm. wrote me back. Mm -hmm. I, I read them all the time. I write lots of LTEs. Anybody write LTEs in the room? <coughs> Letters to the editor? Yeah. yeah. So I wrote him um, in the fall, and I said I didn't want him to put forward uh, Brett Talley. Brett Talley, 36 years old. He never tried a case. His wife worked in the White House. He excluded that information. Yeah. And I said, no, I'm not going to put Talley forward. I sent that to Toomey. He never responded. He responded to me yesterday. He gave me the basic, you know, after Tammy does the form letter. Mm. And um, he said, he didn't, he didn't explain what he would have done to Tally. You know, with Tally, he probably would have confirmed it because Toomey has confirmed all the non qualified nominees that have gone past the Judiciary Committee. But he said in the letter, well, Tally, you know, he backed out. He withdrew his nomination. Well, that didn't give me any answers because I asked Toomey what he was going to do, you know, with this nomination. Was he going to vote for this person? He never answered. So what? Uh, Tally actually withdrew himself. Oh, he withdrew himself. Yeah. So Peterson and Yeah. But the phone calls that have been being made to the offices have more information. The fact, uh, you saw the Peterson video with um, John Kennedy of Louisiana, a Republican, question him, the hard line questions. Did you pay attention to the end when he asked him if they ever blogged about the yes. KKK? Because of that other judge. Because of the other judge who has blogged about oh. the KKK. <laughs> So, reminder, we don't want to give Donald Trump four Supreme Court judges. We'll never recover from that. His presidency lasts another, another seven months, or for the last seven more years. These judges sit there for 40 plus. Yes. This is his legacy. Yes. So, this is, no, this is the old one. So, we have to admit this now. Thank you for pointing that out. So we're going to replace the name if you have this, a call to action. Right now, we want to replace the name of Tally. Although it is good to mention um, that you know, know about these folks. But we want to replace Tally with Thomas Parr from North Carolina. We cannot let Jesse Helms' protege get on the federal bench in the Black Belt of North Carolina. Um, Parr, Thomas Parr. F-A-R-R? Yes, F-A-R-R. How many of you are on Facebook? Yeah? The White Courts Matter in Pennsylvania, because there's several White Courts Matter, we're in about 14 other states. 
the White Horse Matter Pennsylvania Facebook page, I'm on there all the time. If, if Trump is up tweeting, I'm up on Facebook, countering everything he's tweeting. So um, please go there. Also, our website is available there as well, whitehorsematterpa.org. I have to say, I don't update the website as much as I would love to. I, I am White Horse Matter Pennsylvania, one person. I'm one person educating Pennsylvania about the federal courts. That's why you're all advertised tonight. <laughs>
how do you get on your email list? Do you want us to yes. email you? Yes, or? yes, I have a sign up sheet and I'll pass that around. Oh, okay. uh, please put your email. I send out one email a month. I'm not going to kill you with emails. I'm not going to ask you for money. I just want you to get the information because it's knowledge is power. I'll send you articles I think are important for you to read. If you're not on Facebook, because I post them there as well. But yeah, I just, I just need your advocacy. Just talking to people about this. Like I said, I'm one person traveling the entire state of Pennsylvania. It is large state. <laughs> it's a large state. And my car is getting a lot of miles. <laughs> so anything that you can do, if you have family who lives in Erie, you know, give them a call. Tell them what's going on with the federal courts. Actually, I will be going up to Erie in February. But um, and if I can meet up there in the yeah. 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 Yeah, so if you have family all over the state, you have family, you know, wherever they are in the country, let them know how important these federal courts are. This is our last line of defense against this current administration. It really is. Yeah. So are you a public trainer? Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you a little information about what I know. So it, now the case is going to get heard in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. The Pennsylvania Supreme Court is a little more uh, left than the Commonwealth Court is. Um, so the better chance. Uh, you might get a positive outcome with the gerrymandering case and see if it will affect the 2018 elections. So if they have to redraw the maps, if that's what the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania says, they have to redraw the maps for 2018. So Kadita, it's January 17th that the Supreme Court is going to start? They have a deadline that it has to uh, finish up, yeah. Yeah, the 17th is the, is the beginning of the case. The candidates have indicated when I've talked to them that they think that the lines will be redrawn before the primary. Is that what you're hearing? We have long periods that they're going to go back to the last maps. Right, right. So they don't have to revote. And then in 2020, when the new census comes out, then they would be gone. Right. And then you have to worry about the 2020 census because yeah. Trump is putting yes. folks in place to run the census. Right. Yes. Yes. No, what you know. So, yes. yeah. One positive, one positive thing you should know too is that when. Um, December 22nd rolled around, and the 115th Congress was out of session, all of these nominees dropped out. It, it starts over again. Now they have to get renominated again. So Thomas Barr, he's no longer in contention. They need to renominate him again. So there's a chance. There is a chance. When does that happen? It happened already. So it's been, it's been wiped up. So, so Ms. Thomas Barr, was he also part of the Bar Association? Actually, he got an okay rating. Yeah. Yeah, so the American Bar Association isn't everything, but it has been important. But yeah. Yeah. But um, you can also hit to me on Steve Grass, G R A S Z. He was one of the two um, unanimous unqualifieds. To me, approved him. Yeah. To me, approved Grass. He's now a, a sort of court of appeals judge. And these judges are all coming from the Federal Society and the Heritage Foundation. Yeah, so Trump doesn't know who these people are. So he's, the names are coming from the Federal Society and the Heritage Foundation. So these judges all believe the same thing. Um, and they're 36 years old. So now that the blue card is out of the picture, um, who makes that first decision of nothing? Now it's Grassley. It's Grassley saying, okay, I think that Casey's playing games by not turning into blue slip, so I'm going to hear from this judge. Yeah. It's potential not my name. So it's Grassley who controls everything right now. Okay. And, and his, his uh, title? He's a Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman. Yeah. His number's on that paper, too. Call him. He's leadership. You can call leadership from any state. Yeah. Uh, which also means Tom Tillis in North Carolina. You can call Tom <coughs> Tillis' office because he's on the Senate Judiciary Committee and tell him no comments far. Is um is Grassley up for the election in twenty eighteen? You know, I I think he's up for twenty eighteen or twenty twenty. So we're stopping him for a while. Yeah, Hatch was around. Yeah, we're we'll only stuck with him if the Democrats can flip the Senate. <coughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's and then true. the Senate Judiciary Committee is identified. That's true. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So it's just about gerrymandering. There's um I don't know if I'm sure you're familiar with this National Democratic Redistricting Committee. Put together by Eric Holder, Eric um, Holder put together by Eric Holder and Obama, President Obama. Yeah. So they're raising money uh, to address this issue and try to fix it. It's the NDRC. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
those of you that live in Reading, you know longer live in a democracy. Right. Who lives in Reading? They might live in the city of right. Reading. Yeah, you don't even live in a democracy anymore. I, I live in the 11th district, uh, Barletta, in Barletta. Mm -hmm. He grabs a little bit of Dolphin County and then he runs right up to north. And so those of us who live in that little bit of Dolphin County, we don't live in democracy either. So, yeah, so I kind of depressed you a little bit, but I want you to know you saw the video, what your advocacy can do. 40,000 signatures, we're going to have to get maybe 50,000 this time. And so that'll be working through emails that go out, the notifications you'll get if you sign up for our emails, and I'll let you know what to do, and what's the position, is, you know, petition to sign. It's going to take all of us. So, Kavita, the, the petitions that we sign constantly yeah. online, They have to account them. These offices have to account what's going on in their offices. So this is the thing, like to me, you know, he'll say, you know, I'll call the office and I'll say, I don't want you to vote for tally. And he'll say, well, I think 27 people say vote for tally. So they have to account what's going on. That's a call. A That's call is the that correspondence. Is. Any correspondence. A lot of these petitions, depending upon the software they use, they go right to the office as like an email, these petitions. So how are they been doing? Have you done any petitions? Okay, no. It just depends on the organization. Our organization, when we do petitions, it'll go right to the office, as we know. To our office? No, to Toomey's office. To the yeah. office. Yeah. office. Yeah. And it's also the thing to do is to contact Senator Casey as well. Positive feedback is always a good thing. Because he, too, can say, I'm not going to get any phone calls against FAR. And that's why I'm voting for FAR. So positive reinforcement doesn't hurt. Casey 2.0 is a little different right now, right? <laughs> Too. I mean, there's no question that the Republican Party has swung heart right, and these are the issues that we're facing. But surely moderate Republicans could understand what we're saying, what we're saying and feeling. This isn't right. This is not America. Do you ever give this presentation to, to moderate Republicans? They're silent right now. Yeah. You know, I, I've given presentations to union groups, and you just don't know who's in the room in a union group. So I have gone out to groups that don't completely, completely left, you know. Okay. Um, I would love to get out to more, because they do, you know, they should care about what happens in the tradition of the Senate. I, I want to mention that there quite possibly could be some moderate Republicans in this room right now. Mm -hmm. okay. Into this room is not strictly that. Oh, okay. Oh, that's a good point. We got the minutes. We don't call anyone now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they might be here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so your advocacy does matter. What you're doing is just, uh, the history books will look back on this favorably. You know, I, when I went to Homesdale, Wayne County, my experience there, I had my drive alone to Wayne County. It's Black Lives Matters back there somewhere that sign. And I kind of worry as an individual driving alone into you know, rural America, what could happen to me? It's a real concern. Yeah. And um, I got to Wayne County and I got out my car. I was a little early. I get there early. I get out my car to go into a diner. Um, and as soon as I get out of my car, I see two shirts, two I wear a t shirt that say Blue Lives Matter. I'm like, oh, oh Blue Lives Matter. <laughs> then I go to the diner and I'm like, I walk in the diner. I'm not sure that I'm even allowed to be in this diner because it was like 1950s kind of setting. <laughs> And the guys that opened the door when I was coming in had Obama t-shirts on, but not the favorable buy kind of Obama t-shirts on. I was like, oh, like. So then I got to, it was indivisible, it was an indivisible group in Wayne County. And I felt like Harriet Tubman, making one of those barnyard speeches to like the press of the crowd. And I, did, I felt like Harriet Tubman, like am I allowed to be in Wayne County right now? Mm. Was tall. But they were a great group and they're very active. And for them to advocate in Wayne's County for federal courts is very important because to me it's like, Wayne County, oh crap, okay, let me get you involved with this one on Wayne County. So yeah, I, I do, I'll go anywhere, I'll speak in front of anybody. I'll tell the truth up here so they can't get me from the truth. But I have a lot to say tonight, I'm sorry. Um, I actually, over the summer I was selling Hate Has No Home Here signs and I went up to Schuylkill County. The Democrats up there are lovely, they're wonderful. Have you been up to Schuylkill? Um, let's see, I've been to Wilkes-Barre, is that, is that, is that over, right? Bacawana? No, I haven't been to Google. Anybody know anybody's Google? If you know a place to put me in front of, please. I will, I will. Yes, yes. I have to my car. I'll, anywhere you send me, I will go. There's a room of 20 people, I will have far, we will travel. Yeah, I'll speak in front of anybody. But yeah, 
guys, so I just want, I want you to leave here feeling the power. Because what, you, what you're going to do with these phone calls you're going to make, if you're writing a letter to the editor, to me, it's so thin-skinned. Let me tell you, he, has, he keeps a binder in his office of all the letters to the editor that has his name in it. Really? Oh, let's start writing. All right. He has a binder in his office of all the letters to the editor that has his name in it. He does not like bad press. Bigger binder. Bigger binder. Bigger binder. Yeah. Not a lot of women in those binders either. <laughs> Do you have any more here? Flyers? I didn't get a flyer. The flyer. Yes, I have more. Oh, good. She has more. If I can borrow what you're saying, because I forgot mine. Do you mind if I can? Yeah, yeah. I'll send that around. Okay. Do you have a long time petition? I don't have a petition yet. We don't have one created. Um, thank you. Um, but yeah, so I want to I thank you, Amy. Jane, thank you for having me. Debbie. Thank you so much for being here.